I'm going to show you the quickest and easiest way that I have found to set up Facebook's conversion API for WordPress. Starting here from the events manager, if we go to add events and then using the conversion API and then use a partner, we will see all of the methods for getting this conversion API set up. One we're going to focus on today is conversions API gateway. Now I've tried these other options. Zapier, it doesn't deduplicate. It has an issue with the deduplication, which basically makes it useless. WordPress right here makes you think that you're installing using the conversion API and server side conversions and all that stuff, but it really just installs a plugin and uses the browser pixel. Very, very deceptive. I made a video on this right here. Heads up, WordPress for Facebook plugin does not uh, does not work or does not actually use the conversion API. And then the other option down here is Google Tag Manager. Now this works, but this adds a whole other layer of complexity on top of it because you have to learn how to use Google Tag Manager, get that set up. Uh, then you basically have to set that up to integrate with Google Analytics and then send that all back to a server. Okay, so there's a lot of additional complexity in setup. Any of your events that you've got set up, uh, you've got to move them over to Google Tag Manager. I just felt like this was a big step, a big layer of complexity in the system that didn't need to be there. That's why I like Conversions API Gateway here. It is the quickest and easiest, and this is the one that I'm going to show you how to set up. First of all, to get this set up, you have to be using Amazon Web Services. Okay, so come on over to Amazon Web Services, just Google Amazon Web Services, get here, and then sign up. Uh, learn about AWS pricing, and then create a free account and get it all signed up. Now, to actually create it, I think you need to put in your credit card number because it's not free. And any of these server-side conversion API setups are going to require you to input your credit card number and they will bill you for the actual usage and the data that you're sending from your website ultimately on over to Facebook. Yes, it sucks. Yes, it's another thing we have to pay for. But it, the reality is, is no matter which method you use, to set up this conversion API, you're going to have to pay for it. Uh, Amazon Web Services, in the grand scheme of things, is pretty economical. Okay, so I'm not gonna get into pricing. It really varies on how much traffic you have, but most websites um, are not really gonna be kind of blowing this out of the water here. And that said, if, you know, if you're using Facebook ads profitably, you're gonna have no problem paying for you know, AWS to get the benefit from the conversion API. So sign up to this and then sign into your account. I am. All right, now we're gonna head back on over here to our events manager and we're gonna get started with the conversions API gateway. And we're gonna add our domain. Uh, if you have multiple domains that the pixel is sending data from, you'll wanna select them here and they'll all pop up in the dropdown when you stop, start typing. We're just doing it for my you know, main website demo purposes, momentumandbusiness.com. Then it's gonna ask you to enter a subdomain. This is where the actual um, gateway is going to be installed. I just leave it as the default here. You could change it. Um, you could change it to whatever you want, but I just have always left it as the default. It really needs to be a place that you, know, you can come back to in the future, but no one else needs to find. So you could put gateway in there if you want. And actually, you know what? I am just gonna, you know, I was gonna put Gateway, but that, in the big picture, right, if this was a live website, people might be searching Gateway. Um, so we'll just leave that as it is. So I guess the best thing to do is just leave it alone. But if you want to, and if you're experienced with kind of network infrastructure and such, you could change it. So we're gonna click Next. Now select Deployment Method. What we're gonna do here is select your hosting region. So it's gonna say Deploy on Amazon Web Services. So it's very clear what we're doing and then select our hosting region. As a general rule of thumb, you wanna select the one that is closer to, closest to most of your audience. But again, in the big picture, you know it's only gonna make milliseconds of difference, so it's really not gonna do anything. Uh, I'm gonna select US East. I don't really know where my audience is in the US primarily. I guess pretty well diversified across the US. So we're gonna select it, and then we're gonna click Begin Deployment. Right there. And it's gonna load. It's gonna load us up into uh, creating a new stack on Amazon Web Services. And then you need to enter your email and password. So I'm gonna enter my email and then password. Now the password needs to be 12 characters long and have a special character in it. So keep that in mind, one of those kind of passwords. I think it needs a capital. Um, I'm putting that in mind. 
Everything else on it, leave the same. Check this little I acknowledge box down there and then create stack. Okay, so it is running. So at this point, there's really nothing further that we can do until it says create complete. All right, so we gotta wait for this to say create complete. So at that point, uh, we can just take a break, go poke around on Facebook or Instagram for a few minutes, come back, click the refresh button, and uh, wait for this to change. Okay, mine's still in progress here, so I'm gonna wait a few minutes for it to change. Okay, a few minutes later, we've got create complete here, create complete there. So I think we're ready to go on to the next step. So we're gonna head back to the events manager, click next. All right, and now it's time for us to set up the DNS. So for that, we have to go into our DNS settings for our domain and set up this subdomain as an A record with the applicable IP address. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go get the IP address from Amazon Web Services. So I'm gonna click on outputs here and here's our IP address right there. I'm just gonna copy that and then head on over to the DNS record for it. I'm already in the DNS record for my site uh, at Namecheap here. You'll need to get into the DNS records for your domain wherever your domain is purchased. It should look something like this and we're gonna to wanna to add a new record. It's gonna be an A record and we're gonna put in the IP address as that, whatever was here in the Amazon Web Services outputs. And then we need to put this in the A record as well, the little subdomain that we created, whether we renamed it or just used whatever Facebook uh, created for us. In my case here, it is Y-O-J-K-O-I. So we'll come back here and our host is just gonna be Y-O-J-K-O-I. And then we're gonna click on save changes. All right now here we might wanna take a couple minute break again uh, to wait for the A record to update. Facebook does show you this status right here, but it is not really 110% accurate. And if you're familiar with, you know, handling these DNS records, you can just click this and skip on to the next step. I like to do a, you know, a little manual check, even though I know what I'm doing, I like to double check and triple check myself. So I'm gonna come back here and remember the Y-O-J-K-O-Y, and then I would Google just DNS A record checker. And for that here, we are going to input what we got, excuse me, one, mine was Y-O-J-K-O-Y, I think, at, or not at, dot, mydomain.com, right? And we're gonna search it here. What we wanna see is that IP address loading for the A record. So here it is uh, on dnschecker.org. You can just Google A record DNS checker and use whatever one comes up. It'll probably be this one first. So we can see it's pointing to it, pointing that A record, even though here it's not. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Okay, so here we go. Finish your setup for the Conversions API gateway. Now you'll probably wanna click the big green button that says go to console, but the reality is your install is probably not done running yet. So to check on it, we can come back here to Amazon Web Services and click on this link right here. The uh, Conversions API Gateway Instance URL. Don't really know what that is. I just know that if we click this, it's going to show us the progress of the install. And I'm gonna go back and just open this up in a new tab. Okay, and it's gonna take it maybe 10 to 20 minutes to run. And here you can just see it didn't update. And then once it is done running, it will come up with a, a button at the bottom that says the same thing as this, go to console. So let's just leave this open and let it run. I'm gonna come back to it when it's done. All right, the Conversions API Gateway has finished installing. If we wait for the countdown timer to run out, it'll give us a little button to take us on over to the portal, or we could just come back here and click on go to console. Now let's see what happens here. Wow, Safari can't open the page. This is something that I got basically every time that I did it, right? And look at the URL that it's trying to access. It has this .com slash UI on it. I found that if you just come in here and take the UI off, 
it works. Boom, okay. So now we need that email and password we just created. I'm gonna type mine in. And if we made it this far, everything should be working. And we do. So just like that, you have got the Facebook conversion API gateway set up and installed. And now your install is sending server-side data to Facebook. Now you might be wondering, how do I actually know that this is working? Well, let me show you how you can check on it using a website that's actually getting some traffic that I've got this running on, right? So we're gonna go into a different website right here and you can see some data in here. You can see the event types, the event count, uh, and most importantly, the success rate, all right? So this is in that conversion gateway API console. Now, if we go into our events manager, you will see here under our events, you will see connection method, right? Browser server, browser server. So we know that some things are coming from the server. If we click on manage integrations right here, you'll see that we've got conversions API and browser pixel, both of them showing up as active. And finally, if we click on this little drop down arrow here and then go view details, you can see the amount that is coming from the browser and the amount coming from conversions API. And on this side, I just set it up, you know, a few minutes ago or maybe an hour or so before I did this. So not much has happened from the conversions API over the last, what is it, probably 28 days. Most of that's coming from the browser pixel. You can see what's happening in terms of matching and quality. Deduplication, this will start showing up after a few days. And then finally, recent activities, it'll show you the exact log of what's coming in and uh, what's coming in from the browser and then also what is coming in from the conversion API. So that's how you guys set up the Facebook conversion API for WordPress using the gateway. It's quick and easy. If you guys are getting this set up, let me know in the comments below.